Hans Temestow, fighthype.com, here with Jose Benavidez Sr. How you feeling tonight, man? Man, you know, words cannot describe the happiness and how proud I am of Jose Benavidez Jr. and David Benavidez, man. Good weekend of boxing, uh, spectacular, and very thankful to all the fans and, and all the media and everybody for this uh, great fight. For sure, man. Um, Let's jump right into it, man. I remember I spoke to you a few times. And you were pretty, you were pretty confident that the fight was gonna play out like the Caleb Plant fight, and it it did. But you guys really turned things a lot quicker, man. Like, how did you guys, you know, kind of dominate those last couple rounds? Well, we knew, to be honest with you, that this was the hardest fight in David's career. Uh, facing a two-time Olympian, two-time world champion in two different divisions, left-hander, awkward. And this guy has never got the opportunity to show his skills. So he was hungry. He was ready, man, to come. And we knew that. Uh, we were not really sure how we were going to do it because you can't find another booboo to to far, you know, uh, I, I watched everything that he was doing. Um, um, I went to his Instagram, Facebook, and pretty much every, anything that I can find in order to get to know him better and see how he lives, how many kids does he have, you know, or or anything that would help me, you know, to to uh, get to know him more and, and take a little advantage of anything, you know. Uh, it was not enough, man. So we knew that we would have to make those adjustments uh, each round. But the plan was, uh, even when David, you know, was going to come up, he just told me to, you know, just remind me, you know, to tap, tap, and don't throw those big shots, you know, tap, stay low, and cut the ring off, you know. I want to see what he does with that, and hopefully he let me, lets me work off of that, you know. We're going to continue that doing that. If not, we're going to um, adjust and, and try to do different things. But uh, I think he did good, man. You know, he did the same. You know, he went in there and, and cut the distance and, and kind of uh, closed uh, the distance, the the corners. Uh, and and and, uh, and Boo Boo, you know, he came in there and, and throw a lot of punches. David had a good defense. And, and maybe he got a little bit comfortable. Then he got hit with that big shot. And it just changed everything, you know, through the fight. And, and we made a little bit more of adjustments and, and – David became uh, successful with that, and uh, uh, and he did a great job. Was there any point where you were nervous? The first three rounds looked like Andre was like pretty much in control, especially that first round. Like, was there any point where you was just like, <laughs> was there any point where you were just like, shit, he's really fuck. well? Fuck, man! I'll be honest with you, I was nervous the whole fucking camp. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was nervous the whole camp and the whole camp. I would I try to visualize and and see how would it play, you know, or what can we do? And fuck, man, you know, a lot of people talking a lot, you know, saying that David was gonna get exposed, you know, that you know, uh Boo Boo was gonna make him look like an amateur, that he had terrible feet and that his defense was not good, you know. So sometimes when you hear that a lot, you know, you you think, you know, like they were working off, you know. So I just pray to God to take us there with no injuries, 100% ready. And when I was walking, yeah, you know, yeah, of course I was nervous. I was super nervous. You know, I didn't know how things were going to play, you know. I mean, it's boxing, 10-ounce gloves. And and like I said, but I can't, can't keep my composure in order to help David. And, and by the third round, I felt very confident. <laughs> And then I feel good, and the, the and my confidence was just growing up to the roof like David was. When David caught Andre with that really big shot in the fourth, man, it, it pretty much changed everything. Like, were you surprised that David got the job done in only six rounds? Were you surprised by that? Very surprised. I thought that he was going to stop him maybe like in the seven or eighth. That's what I was hoping with the big shot. Opening up or something like that, not like that, man. To be honest with you, how he broke him down, he took his will, and that guy did not want to come out. 
you know. Uh, it was a big punishment, and I mean, I was just like, fuck, man, they got to stop this fight, man, because at the end of the day, you know, we don't want to hurt nobody, but, you know, the accumulation of punches, you know, uh, would definitely hurt him, you know, and, you know, thank God everything went well, and and he was okay, you know, it was a good fight, but at the end of the day, you know, um, I'm, I'm thankful that, you know, he, he not end up in the hospital, you know? You know, Andre, he got dropped in the fourth, but in the third round, I think it was the third. No, I believe it was the end of the fifth or the sixth. Um, Benavidez was really, your son was really taking control of everything. But like, Boo Boo had like a little bit of a last gasp where he caught your son with like two uppercuts, a left hook, two shots to the body. <laughs> like he, but, but David just kind of stood there with just like, whatever, you know, like, how good is your son's chin, man? Yeah, that that's where we uh, had to test that chin. You know, he got caught clean, like you said, with the good opera. Then the fo follow up with the hook, and and those shots were connected, perfect. You know, uh, Google can hit. So, you know, a lot of people don't know David got ready for this fight. He was super motivated. He worked super hard, extremely hard for this fight. Uh, he was super disciplined. And these are the kind of fights that, you know, in my mind, like I, I, I'm going to say, it, you know, this is the toughest fight of his career. So when you have something like that, you know, you got to get up and work. You got to do other things. You got to uh, work your ass off. And, and that's exactly what he did. A lot of discipline and it made it look easy. You're, you're, I know that you were saying like leading into the fight, you thought it was going to be the most difficult fight. But now that everything is played out. Do you think he still was, or do you give that to Caleb Plant? I mean, shit. I mean, like I said, you know, it was two different fighters back then. You know, uh, there's so many different things that happen and uh, happens in a fight. Uh, with Caleb Plant, it was his first fight, pay per view, a lot of lights, uh, and it, 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 sometimes you know, people under the lights, they it's too much. Uh, the other thing with Caleb Plant, you know, a big factor there was the referee. I think if the referee wouldn't have helped, try to help Caleb a lot, I think we, we could have got the job a little bit done earlier, you know. But he saved him, got hurt, still saved him. He was clinching a lot. You know, he was uh, standing his hand a lot. And, you know, it was – I think the referee helped him a lot in that fight. My respect to Caleb Plant, you know, I'm not complaining, I'm not saying anything, but it's just two different fights, you know. I think if we had the same referee, I think uh, it would have been totally different. Just out of curiosity, man, if Caleb Plant and Andrade got it on, who do you think will win that fight? That would be a really fucking good fight that everybody would want to see because yeah. both of them fought the Mexican monster, you know, and and uh you know, it would be very interesting. I would love to see that fight. That would be a great fight. I think it should be a matchmaker, you know, because <laughs> that would be a good fight, a very exciting fight because, man, those guys are warriors. Uh, my respects to Caleb Plant, my respects to Boo Boo. Uh, I would love to see that. But I don't know who will win. But I don't know who will win. Is there, is there anybody you would lean towards a little bit, like – you know, maybe. no, two different styles, man. Two different styles. I like both of them, and and wish them the best to both. And whoever comes more prepared, whoever is more smart, will win that fight. Uh, but it's a very tricky fight. Don't count Boo Boo out just because he got stopped. You know, uh, sometimes from that, you know, you wake up and and uh, I think uh. They they both learn a lot. We learn a lot from Caleb Plant, you know. So we keep learning as long as you know they keep maintaining, working hard and and keep uh, discipline. I think uh, uh, we all learn from from those fights. What is it about your son's style that, you know, it seems like people get exhausted really quickly <laughs> when they fight him man like is it the mental pressure is it just like how physically big he is like what is it man well i don't know i don't know you know when uh boo boo came he was heavier than david david was uh 67 167 boo was 167.4 i could say i mean not as much but 
Okay. You know, it, it was supposed to be the other way around, you know, that David would kind of be hitting the 168, you know. We're good, man. Uh, it's just David didn't have an, a good amateur experience. David was not special. David has to work for everything that he does, you know, double. You know, these guys are very special fighters. Uh, and David has to show the world he doesn't get the credit, you know. So I believe that he has to, every fight, he has to show more and more and more and more, you know. The elephant in the room, man. Canelo Alvarez. <laughs> You know, I, I know you kind of, I, I know at times you kind of hate talking about it, but it's like your son took out Caleb Plant. He took out Andrade. Like, in your view, I, I think that you think that the fight will happen in 2024, I think. But do you yeah. think it'll happen? Do you think it'll happen in May or do you have a feeling it'll happen in September? I think there's a big possibility now um, that it can uh, happen in May. We've done everything to prove the people, the fans, that we deserve that fight with flying colors, you know. At first, when everything started, Canelo said, why don't you guys fight each other? I fight the winner of that. We did that, you know. And at the, and at the end of the day, you know, if we fight Canelo or not, we're super happy, super satisfying uh, uh, winning against Caleb Plant. Now, this other fight's like, whoa, man, another big motivation, super happy with the performance. And I think David's just getting better and better and better, you know? So I'm so happy, man. Uh, we're going to continue trying to do our history. And 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 uh, if Canelo wants to fight good, if he doesn't want to fight, you know, we're going to continue, you know, with our legacy. And uh, if he doesn't want to fight, we'll probably go up to 175, try to buy five beat ball. He beat Canelo. He beat Chulo Ramirez. Uh, Bette Vieira is another big monster in that division. I think these guys will fight David. Not, no problem. You know, so that would make really good fights. And then we can come back to 168 again and dominate in those two divisions. And like in your mind, how exactly does a fight with Canelo look? Because like I like I said before, like when I was when I was speaking to you, you was telling me that the Andre fight is going to play out like the Caleb Plant fight. Do you think it's the same thing, or do you think it's no. a little bit different? No, no. You know, uh, Canelo is a different fighter. Uh, Canelo is a fighter that counts forward. Canelo is a guy that throws single shots. Um, for sure, it would be a hard fight. Uh, but that's a big motivation for us, you know, to fight him and and, and get the opportunity Um and show the world that David is the best at 168. That's what I believe and what I've been seeing with the results. You know, there's no doubt. Uh, with Canelo, I can't say that his past two fights or three fights, he hasn't been looking good, you know? So did you have a guy that it looks like he's declining or maybe too busy doing golf or other businesses? And then you have a guy that all he loves and he does is boxing. And you see the, the the improvements and 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 that. So uh, we're 100 percent locked in with boxing and and just focus on being the best at 168 and 175. Uh, and David, it, it's not me; it's him. I see him in a different world, in a different dimension. He's connecting with the stars, with the universe, and spiritually, and with that all that energy, man. When I see him, you know, it's like. This guy is crazy. You know, he's on another level, bro, to be honest with you. Um, and I like that, you know, because he just wants to get better. And his mind is just getting better and learning and and just being the best. He really believes that he's the best at 168. So that makes him very dangerous. You're an honest guy. So I'll ask you straight up because Canelo has probably... If I got to think about it, probably him and like uh, just a handful of other people, the best chin in boxing, man. Does your son stop him or do you see your son probably like getting a decision? You know what? Um, We've seen that David has a good chin. A lot of people talk about his chin. You know, a lot of people say that he doesn't have defense and whatever. You've seen a lot last Saturday. He got hit with a good uppercut and a good hook perfect hooks perfect shots 
It didn't even bother, you know. Um, Canelo does have a good chin. Well, kind of. When he fought, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, don't don't bring that up from like twenty years ago, man. Come no, on. no, no, no. I mean, you know, a chin is a chin. You know, I mean, when you're fighting fighters that are smaller than you, or fighters that are on the way out. But are, we will definitely test them with the. Uh, I'm just being honest, like you said. I'm being honest. Are you talking about but, the fight he had against Miguel Cotto's brother? Yeah, we got saved. But, but 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 like I said, he got hurt. Didn't he get hurt? A little. I'm just bit. saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah. Now, when you you fight a guy, you think Jamal was going to knock him out? Do you think that the other fighter that he fought before that? You know, was going to knock him out. But when you have two warriors like Canelo and David Benavides, I guarantee you there is going to be a knockout in both ways. I'm just being honest, you know. That motherfucker hits hard. I believe that Canelo just, even sometimes he kind of jumps a little bit with those punches. He brings his whole body, you know. Uh, David, you know, we show shown that he has power. So I believe uh, one shot or accumulation of punches. Is what you go for, you know. Uh, David, you know, finds a way, and he throws a lot of punches from different angles. Canelo loves to throw that hook and some uppercuts. David will hit you with up, down, hooks, uppercuts, body shots, pretty much everything, you know. So we won't know until we're there, you know, but we would love to prove to people that David is the best. And I guarantee you, somebody's going to the floor. Somebody is going to go to the floor, and it's going to be an exciting fight. It's going to be a great fight uh, fight for the fans, and it's going to be a great night for boxing. Now, um, we won't know. I could say whatever I want to say, you know, but at the end of the day, we won't know until we make that fight. So if Canelo's watching, that's the only way we're going to find out. We want to fight. Does he want to fight? I mean, and the only way to find out is that both of them try to make that fight, you know? Looking at, I mean, other than Canelo, Canelo is the the main guy, but there's there's really only, like, David Morrell at 168 that, you know, people would be like, okay, this guy could give your son <laughs> a run for his money. You know what I mean? Like, do you look at it in that way also? or I, I don't underestimate uh, David Morrell. He's an Olympian too. Who was a two-time Olympian, two-time world champion? Awkward. You know, Morel is a great fighter. But sometimes, you know, you need that experience to fight all these styles. I mean, if you look at Morel and look at David, if I tell you right now, what do you see spe so special about Morel? Good uppercuts, good body shots, good jabs, good right hands. I mean, does he throw up uh, volume of punches? Uh, I don't even think he takes things serious. You know, he goes in there. I mean, who has he fought? Who is he fighting? Who is he fighting now? Do you know that guy? Is he a, a, a good guy? You know, I think he should be fighting uh, Caleb Plant, you know, and see how he looks with them. And then I could, you know, once he beats Caleb Plant, uh, and, and you know, like, damn, just by fighting him and beating him, it doesn't matter how he wins. Then we can say, you know, but at the end of the day, we'll fight him tomorrow. We'll fight Morel tomorrow because we're here to fight whoever. We're here to keep proving ourselves. I don't think he has experience. I think David will stop him. I don't think he has experience. I think in like in about a year or two, he's going to get more dangerous and possibly like in the future, that will be a fucking great fight, you know? But now I don't underestimate him. We would love to fight him, you know, to be honest with you. Uh if they call me right now and they say, hey, let's make this fight, let's make it happen before, you know, he gets better because he is getting better and he's a great fighter. You know, he is going to get all that experience and it's going to make it difficult. Why not take him now? Looking at 175 pounds, man, who would be more difficult for your son? Would it be Bivol or would it be that that, that other monster better be a man? Fuck, man. Either or. It, These you guys got, are... you got You got to pick one, man. You got to pick one. You know, uh, fuck, man. I, I would say, you know, because he beat Canelo, I will give it to Bibol. 
Wow. But the other guy hits like a fucking mule, you know? Well, that's, that's one shot. I was just going to say, I, I think it'll be better be because he's so like strong. So tell me why, tell me why it's Bivol instead. Be, be, the, be, the reason I would go be Bivol because he beat Canelo. He beat the king, the face of boxing, you know? Um, that's the only reason, but you know, bet the bid, you know, he, he hits super hard, man. You know, he touches you with those punches. You're done, man. <laughs> you're, you're done, you know? So, I mean, they're very dangerous fighters, man. Uh, uh, both of them, we will fight any of them. They're so dangerous, you know, that, but these are the kind of fights that we want to give to the people, the dangerous fights. And, and we're not even, I would say probably we'll fight a, a fight at one second. No, we'll go straight. You know, and five B ball, or because I know that David's a big guy for one seventy five, and and you know I think we we feel comfortable. We feel that you know uh, we can definitely make it happen, and 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 we would love to test test ourselves and see where we at. And you'd be willing to do the same thing with Better BF, just jump straight into a fight with him, no warm ups. Yes, yes, those are the fights that David's looking for, and uh, I mean right now. I mean, it, it doesn't even make any sense for us. Who can we fight at 175? I mean, you got a guy like uh, Marcus Brown. Um, Do you think uh, people want to see that fight? I mean, yeah, no problem. Okay, let's let's fight him. No, I'm just saying, you know, it has to be motivating for the people, you know. Uh, I mean, let's fight him too, you know. But I, I think, it, you know, I think uh, we're known by not running from nobody and picking our fighters, you know. Why not fight the the dangerous guys? You know the guys that are gonna give us trouble. You know, uh, I'm not saying that uh, Brown is not gonna give us any trouble, but but I think these two guys are the monsters of the division, and we'll be happy to fight anybody. But I think uh, uh, if we can't get them, we'll try to something like that. You know, and th that's still a dangerous fight. You know, but these other ones are super dangerous. You know, like super dangerous. Do you, is is it just straight up for you where it's just like, if we don't get Canelo in May, we're going to 175. And like our first fight, if our first fight in 2024 is not Canelo, we're going to 175. Or are you just like, if our first fight isn't Canelo, Mangia, or Morel, then we're going to move up to 175. Yeah, well, you know, we've been trying to get that fight with Morel. But for some reason, two times already, it hasn't happened. One time his trainer said, Ronnie Shield said that he wasn't ready for David. The other time his manager said that he wasn't ready. When is he going to be ready? Does it make sense? Is it worth uh, fighting Morel pay-per-view? I don't think uh, uh, we're not, you know, the numbers are not up there for us either, you know. So we need somebody that has the same as, as we have in order to make that fight happen pay-per-view uh we're not superstars you know so i mean where are they gonna get all that money it has to make sense in my opinion you know so that's why i think they don't he needs a little bit more uh and i think it's gonna be a great fight but like i said we will fight him tomorrow uh, but mungia we were in negotiations with mungia uh we off they offer him uh 60 40 pay-per-views and i think he does have a following and uh they came back, they said they wanted 50-50, and we said, yeah, sure, no problem. Let's make it happen. And then they disappear. So, um, I mean, yeah, those are the two more potential fights. I see it a little bit more harder because of the of the followers that the crowd that um, Morel has, you know, to make it. It's a little bit, not, not us, not him. You know, I don't think he's scared. I think he wants to fight. Uh, but it, at the end of the day, you know, people got to understand that it has to make money. It has to make sense for the people that are going to make money. I mean, if it doesn't make money, if we don't have that uh, followers, uh, they're not going to make money. I think that's what I think, you know. But uh, Mungia has a good following, um, and that would be a great fight too. But is it is it the case where you just like like you're going to put your foot down and say if we don't get any of those three guys, uh, Canelo, uh, Morel, or Mungia? Like in our first fight in two thousand and twenty four, then we're just gonna be like, ah, we're good. We're going to one seventy five. Or are you just gonna yeah. like sit around? 
No, no, fuck no. We're not gonna sit around. That that's what we that's why we don't pick pick and choose our fighters. Uh we wanna stay active and if the networks or whoever's paying for it accepts that fight, we'll make it happen. You know, we don't wanna sit down here and wait for Canelo or whoever, you know. We gotta keep going and get more experience and and keep improving to get those big fights when the time comes. Uh but like I said, you know. What can we do if these guys don't want to fight? Real quick, last thing on um on David. Does your son knock out better be able if they fight? Hey, I cannot tell you that. Uh, we don't know. We never fought at one seventy five. You know, it, it's uh, it's I never even seen nobody hurt these two guys. You know, maybe B Ball got a little bit hurt. You know, in one of the fights, but I don't know. You know, we never been there. You know, it, it's hard for me to say. I would love to get the opportunity to see what we can do. Uh, you know, uh, David's still a baby. You know, he's only 26 years old, man. And he has a lot to learn. He has he hasn't even got his mastering, I think. Maybe 28, uh, 29, you know. I think we'll definitely see the development of David. Uh, but it, it, it it's... Very hard for me to say that we will knock him out. I will never say we'll knock out uh, Better Beer or people, you know. The 168s will fuck him up, you know, but not the 175s. <laughs>